Mm, let's see here. Mic in, instrument in, line in, line out, MIDI in, MIDI out, SPDIF, optical, ADAT, world clock. What's wrong with that guy? <laughs> Let's have a look. Ah, audio interfaces, inputs and outputs. Hmm. Confusing subject. Audio interfaces are at the heart of any recording studio, but trying to choose the right one for you can be confusing. In my last video, I covered what an audio interface is, how it works, what it does, and the different types. In this video, I'm solely gonna cover audio interfaces, inputs, and outputs. So if you haven't seen my first video, be sure to check that one out. For any beginner, the inputs and outputs can look incredibly intimidating. So in this video, I'm gonna guide you through them all and explain what they're used for. So sit back and relax, enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Chris and this is Chris's Sound Lab. Ah, the sun is back, excellent. To make this as simple as possible, we're gonna look at two audio interfaces, one more basic one and one more complex one. Looking at two audio interfaces side by side is a good way to look at the different inputs and outputs. I'm using two models from the Focusrite Scarlet series. These are audio interfaces that I really love and I myself have the 18i8 model. I did a review of these in a previous video, which you can check in the video link description. Firstly, let's look at Focusrite's 4i4 model. This is the third largest in their Scarlet series and it has a good selection of inputs and outputs to get a good overview. On the front, we have two inputs for either a microphone or an instrument, such as a guitar or a synthesizer. An important thing to note is that instrument level inputs are designed for a low signal, such as that coming from a guitar, and line level inputs expect a hotter signal which would come from a synthesizer or an electric piano, for example. It's very common on the front of audio interfaces to have an input that can accept either instrument level or a line level. We can choose between the two by pressing the instrument button. To the right, you have an output for your headphones so you can listen to your music. On the back, there are some dedicated line inputs for line level instruments. Next, there are some line outputs these are used to connect studio speakers, also known as studio monitors, but they can also be used for external hardware, which I will cover later. Next, there is a MIDI input for connecting a MIDI instrument, like a keyboard, although most MIDI keyboards can be connected to your computer directly by USB. You can also use the MIDI out to send MIDI data to a MIDI instrument. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, let's look at an example. Imagine I've got some MIDI data in my computer in the form of MIDI notes, and I want to send this to a MIDI synthesizer or sequencer. So the MIDI data would be sent from your computer to the audio interface. From there, you could send it to your MIDI synthesizer or sequencer using the MIDI output. After you've sent the data to the MIDI instrument, it would then play the data in the form of music. From there, you would send it into your audio interface using the MIDI in, and then it would be sent back to your computer so you could record it. And that covers our most basic inputs and outputs, but if it was still too much to take in, please feel free to go back to the beginning of the video before we proceed. Next, we're gonna look at the largest audio interface from Focusrite's Scarlet series, the 18i20. This model features the most common inputs and outputs that you find on more advanced interfaces. On the front, there are two microphone, instrument, and line inputs, and to the right, there are two headphone outputs, which is straightforward enough. The back looks intimidating, but once we break it down, it's not that complicated. First, you can see more mic inputs and line inputs for line level instruments. Then there are a collection of 10 line outputs. Remember, these can be used for our studio monitors, but they also play other roles. For example, we could send audio from our computer to the audio interface and then to some analog hardware such as a compressor. 
As your audio is being processed by the compressor, you can then send it back to your audio interface and to your computer. This is quite a common process in recording studios because a lot of engineers and producers like the sound of analog hardware. It tends to color the sound in a different way. This means that it adds some kind of tonal characteristic which is pleasing to the ear. We could also use line outputs to connect more studio monitors or we could even set up a different headphone mix for somebody in the recording studio. So we could add a reverb for a singer whilst he or she is singing. Next you have a MIDI input and a MIDI output, just like what we talked about earlier on the 4i4 model. The last inputs and outputs are where we start to see some new options that you might not have come across before. Firstly, we have our optical input and output. These are also known as ADA. These are digital inputs and outputs which can send eight channels of information. What does this mean exactly? A channel is a pathway where audio can come in or go out. Think of a big mixing desk. Each vertical line is a channel and on your door, a channel is also displayed as a vertical line. The more channels you have, the more audio you can record and the more audio you can send somewhere. So with optical inputs and outputs, you can actually connect another audio interface to your first one, giving you more inputs and outputs. The problem is if two audio interfaces or more are sending and receiving information, they can become out of sync and all this data is being sent, which causes clipping and distortion and noise. So what do we do? This is when we use the world clock. World clock, hmm, strange name. By connecting the world clock, we make one audio interface the clock master. Hmm, the clock master, I like that title. This ensures that all of the audio interfaces are working in perfect harmony with each other and everybody is happy. To be honest, optical or ADAT give us a lot of options, but as a beginner or a budget studio owner, you're probably not gonna be concerned with using them. It's something that will come later when you decide to expand your recording studio. Finally, we have SPDIF. SPDIF, 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 how do you say that? This is similar to ADAT, but it can only carry two channels of information. So it's a little bit less versatile than optical or ADAT. It's also a digital audio format that can be used to connect external hardware. Some synthesizers use SPDIF, audio effects units, a CD player, or you could even output your audio to another preamp, for example. If you really like that old analog sound, you could even use a SPDIF output to send audio to a tape machine. That pretty much covers the most common inputs and outputs that you can find on modern day audio interfaces. As you can see, there are a few different types, but when you break it down, it's not that complicated. Having more inputs and outputs give you more connectivity options. But when you're just starting out, you probably only need the basics. So that would be your mic, instrument and line inputs, a headphone output, line outputs for either your studio monitors or other hardware, and you might want to use a MIDI input and a MIDI output. With regards to SPDIF and optical slash ADAT, you may want to use those at a later stage. But if it's something that you want to think about now, there are plenty of options available for you to choose from. So to help you guys make the right choice, I've written an article on my website. If you haven't checked this out already, there's a link down in the video description. In this article, I cover the best audio interfaces from low to high price, and I detail what software is included, the compatibility, and the inputs and outputs of each. If you're interested in learning more about the Focusrite Scarlet series, which I did a review on myself, you can also check some links down in the video description. So I hope that after watching my first video, what is an audio interface, and watching this video explaining the inputs and outputs, you now have a clear understanding of audio interfaces. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. Feel free to comment down below asking me any questions, or you can even tell me what audio interface you use or are interested in buying. My name is Chris and you can also get me at chrissoundlab.com. Well, that's all for now and I hope to see you on my next video.